The topic that we will be debating today is reproductive cloning. Before I begin, I just wanted to clarify that we are not discussing the topics of stem cell research or the rehabilitation of organs through cells. Uh, reproductive cloning is defined as the deliber deliberate production of genetically identical individuals. Each newly produced individual is a clone of the original. Clones contain identical sets of genetic material in the nucleus, which is a compartment that contains the chromosomes of every cell in their bodies. Thus, cells from two clones have the same DNA and the same genes in their nuclei. In the United States, there are currently 15 states that have laws banning reproductive cloning or the use of stem cell research funds for reproductive cloning. Our policy statement is that reproductive cloning should be federally banned. We believe that reproductive cloning should be prohibited because it could potentially foster an understanding of people as objects that can be designed and manufactured to possess specific characteristics. Dr. Leanne Katz, chairman of the President's Council on Bioethics, stated that cloning threatens the dignity of human procreation, giving one generation unprecedented genetic control over the next. It is the first step toward a eugenic world in which children become objects of manipulation and products of will. Reproductive cloning would diminish the sense of uniqueness of an individual. It would violate deeply and widely held convictions concerning human individuality and freedom, <coughs> and it could lead to a devaluation of clones in comparison with non-clones. Instead of being considered as a unique individual, the clone will be a copy of the parent and expected to share the same traits and characteristics. This is an unacceptable infringement of the liberty and autonomy that we grant to every human person. Across the span of millions of years, the process of reproduction in mammals has been finely tuned by natural selection. And altering this highly integrated and complex process of the life cycle drastic, could drastically change the course of human life. The implementation of reproductive cloning goes against the natural occurrences of life and death, and it will create the imbalance within the population. Thomas Robert Malthus and Charles Robert Darwin believed that the world was already overpopulated in the early 1900s. Malthus said that the population tends to exceed the available resources, and Darwin believed that the cloning of humans at the workbench of the cell biologist would affect the natural evolution of man. According to scientist Jay Cohen, the current estimated carrying capacity of the Earth is 8 billion. As a result of the technological and medical advancements that have been made currently, the population of Earth is approximately 7 billion and expected to exceed 15 billion in the year 2015 at the rate at which we are going. Reproductive cloning would lead to a lack of diversity amongst the human population. The natural process of evolution will be halted, and as a result, humankind will be denied development and may be rendered more susceptible to disease. In summation, the artificial creation of humans and rehabilitation of human diseases as a result of reproductive cloning can negatively affect the numerical and genetic balance of Earth in the process of life and death. Continuing on to an another reason as to why we believe that reproductive cloning should be banned, Reproductive cloning is inherently unsafe. The National Research Council has stated that 95% of mammalian cloning experiments have resulted in failures in the form of miscarriages, stillbirths, and life-threatening anomalies. Some experts believe no clones are fully healthy ever. The technique of cloning could not be developed in humans without putting the physical safety of the clones and the women who bear the children at great risk. Researchers John F. Kilner and Robert P. George came to the conclusion in their article, Human Cloning, what it, What's at Stake? that cloning carries high risks of bodily harm to the child produced through cloning. Experiments in the cloning of animals reveals that a high percentage of clones of any mammalian species are born with or develop severe deformities or abnormalities. Cloned embryos mostly die at early stages of embryonic development. They may also spontaneously abort after a pregnancy has been established. Even when clones are born, many are abnormal and die shortly after due to the variety of physiological and anatomical problems, with, which vary from species to species. Harm to women stems from the inefficiency of human cloning as well. In the, on, in the only published human cloning experiment done by the Center for Bioethics and Human Dignity, 16 women donated a total of 242 eggs. Of the clone embryos created with the eggs, only 30 reached reach the lactose <coughs> stage um, where embryonic stem cells can be obtained. Out of these 30 eggs, only one embryonic cell stem, stem cell line was established. This means that the number of embryos needed in order to successfully produce a clone would exceed the number of embryos available. There are not enough women of childbearing age in the United States to donate eggs in order to, for this procedure to work. Dolly the sheep, the most famous of all cloned mammals, was affiliated with a grave premature arthritis. In fact, Dolly had to be put down at age six because of these problems. Ian Wilmot, the co-creator of Dolly, even stated that any form of human cloning is criminally irresponsible due to its high failure rate. It took 277 failed attempts for them to finally clone Dolly. It is unclear whether reproductive cloning is even feasible as a result of the persistent low success rate with animals despite much effort to modify these procedures. In conclusion, the reason as to why federally banning reproductive cloning has not already occurred is because it is closely intertwined with, intertwined with therapeutic cloning. 
The major factor complicating progress towards global ban on reproductive cloning is interference from the debate on embryonic stem cell research and so-called therapeutic cloning. Therapeutic cloning is defined as a cloning designed as a therapy for a disease. In therapeutic cloning, the nucleus of a cell, typically a skin cell, is inserted into a fertilized egg whose nucleus has been removed. The cells created via therapeutic cloning can then be transplanted into the patient to treat a disease from which the patient suffers. In contrast to the goal of therapeutic cloning, the goal of reproductive cloning is to create an entirely new individual. In order for the United States to federally ban reproductive cloning, these two topics must be further researched and analyzed. Once these two topics have been thoroughly investigated, a ban on reproductive cloning should be implemented because of the multiple points we covered discussing the negative consequences of reproductive cloning. Steps have already been taken in other countries to ban reproductive cloning. As of October 2003, 45 countries have federally banned reproductive cloning, and we are hoping to follow in their footsteps.